Well, Joe Rogan is all over the news right now because he's had some people on his podcast that don't really agree with the mainstream, you know, what the liberal media is saying about COVID and masking and the vaccine and all that kind of stuff. Now, in this video, I'm not going to defend Joe Rogan. I don't know anything about his beliefs. He certainly doesn't represent Christian faith, but I think the situation that he's facing today right now is a great lesson for us as Christians. And that's what we're going to look at in just a second. But first, let's take a look at some of the statements that he has made, Joe Rogan, once he got some heat about having these doctors on his program. He says, do I get things wrong? Absolutely, I get things wrong. But I try to correct them whenever I get something wrong. I try to correct it because I'm interested in telling the truth. I'm interested in finding out what the truth is. And I'm interested in having interesting conversations with people that have differing opinions. I like what he says here. He says, I'm not interested in only talking to people that have one perspective. I do respect that about Joe Rogan. He has people from all over the spectrum on his podcast. And then he said this, I don't want to just show the contrary opinion to what the narrative. I want to show all kinds of opinions so we can all figure out what's going on, not just about COVID, but about everything, about health, about fitness, about wellness, the state of the world itself. Now, by the way, this kind of perspective is really nice. It's helpful because this shows that Joe Rogan seems to be seeking truth. And Jesus is all about people who seek the truth. God's word, of course, if you're a follower of Jesus, God's word is where we find the truth. And so here's what this whole situation sort of reminds me of in scripture. It says in 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 through 9, he says, Paul writing to Timothy, he says, you should know this, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. Look, for people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God. They will slander others. They will hate what is good. They will oppose the truth. And I love what he says at the end there. Someday everyone will recognize what fools they are. Now, look, I'm not applying this to Joe Rogan anymore because Paul was certainly not writing to a guy like Joe Rogan, who's not even a Christian. He's writing to Christians who are experiencing accusations and slander and being canceled in our culture because we're standing up for something that is true, but our culture is over it. They don't believe in God's truth anymore. They don't believe in a biblical standard anymore. Peter actually wrote about this kind of persecution in the early church. He says, it's God's will that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. And then later in his letter, he explains where those accusations come from. He says, of course, your former friends are surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild and destructive things that they do so they slander you. In other words, they slander you when they disagree with you. They lie about you. They cancel you. They try to shut down your voice. Look, if you're a Christian today, you're going to start experiencing this kind of thing more and more as we are at war with our culture. But I want you to pay attention to what Peter says to the Christians 2,000 years ago. He says to fight them by the lives that we live. He tells the Christians that the weapon we should deploy is an honorable life. We talk about all of this in our new series called Culture Wars. It's where we go through the letter of 1 Peter, one chapter at a time, and we learn about how we can live in the world as Christians who stand on God's truth as our culture wanders further and further away from it. Check it out at pursuegod.org forward slash one Peter.